Well, we're flying. Uh, it's working, which is good. But what is it? This is the Hollybro Copus 3-inch Mini FPV. And uh, the question we want to answer today is, will it mod? Well, this particular one, yeah, it definitely will. Why is that? Because I've already fiddled with it. My name's Johnny. Welcome to the channel. Will it mod? So here it is, the Holybro Copus Mini. Turned up this morning. Um, box looks a bit battered. I've not opened it yet, so I have no idea whether it's in one piece inside, but uh, let's dive in and take a look. Now the idea behind this, this Copus Mini has the Calyx Vista already installed. We're gonna pop on uh, a GPS, a BN220 unit. Stick with what you know, right? Um, and I'm also going to pop on the Express LRS module and get that working for the transmission then I can use my um, TX16S with this. So let's dive in, take a look, and see if it's in one piece. You can see it's taken a, a bit of a knock. Okay. Nice case. Looking at the website, apparently they're not doing these cases with them anymore, so we're quite lucky to have one. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's so tiny. Right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Get it out of the box. Okay, there it is. It is new. It looks like it's been out of the box and sat on something. But it's all there. The Velcro looks new, so um, oh, a little lens cap on there still. Fantastic. Oh, there it is. Tiny little three inch props. Um, so I'm going to build this into something with GPS and uh, just generally have a fiddle with it. This might be better around my garden, just having a, a good bash around the garden with this as opposed to the five inch. Uh, this might be a bit more manageable for the kids to learn on as well, but I'm sure it'd be good fun. So next up is to uh, try and get this thing linked up and running. Um, perhaps install the Express LRS first and see if I can get that bit sorted. What else do we have in the box though whilst we're here? Okay, so we've got a zip tie. Okay, it looks like we've got some motor circlips in there as well. Three of those, four of those, and some of the little brass washers. Uh, looks like a battery rubber in there as well, and a cable, um, presumably to go on the flight controller to add in something like GPS or an external receiver and some instructions. Let's take a look at these instructions. So the cable, yeah, so there's, it's for the UARTs. I'm sure I'll find a, a pin out online, but um, there's the connection for the Cadex Vista kit. Yeah, and I'll check out the pin outs online for the connection of the ELRS and so on. I don't think there's anything left in the box. Nope, empty. So what you see is what we get. Uh, I'm probably gonna swap this XT30 out for an XT60 because all my batteries are XT60 and um, I've got some 4S batteries for this. Got these ones here, the 1300 um, high voltage LiPos. Uh, so yeah, these are going to be used, I'll either chop these off and stick an, eight, an XT30 on there or stick an XT60 on there. Either way, and that's a monster battery, look at that. I'm going to fly for days with that on. Right, anyway, enough of the nonsense. Uh, I'm going to get on and stick the Express LRS on this little bad boy and see if I can get it hooked up. Okay, first things first, what we're going to do is take the uh, this the scabbiest USB cable in the world, but it still works, so I don't really care. Uh, we're going to take this and 
back up the configuration that's currently on there, so the factory stock configuration. We'll have a look at that, get that plugged in, backed up, and then that gives us a, a safe restore point. So I'm gonna get that done first, and then we'll start by uh, taking it all apart. I have to take the glasses off for this because I'm completely blind. So it's actually easier having the glasses off because I've got such a short sight. <clears throat> Otherwise it's impossible. Right, let's go into ground on this first one. Try and get this in a position where we can solder it neatly. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's get ground. Put that through ground. all these off after we've finished, make them nice and neat. Okay, gonna get five volt next, which looks like that one. And these boards, the uh, the pins are not always entirely lined up with the board print, it's slightly offset, so you have to work your way back or we'll look at a pinout diagram. <laughs> okay, looks good. And then for green, I put as transmit. We'll just check on here. Green is TX, so I'll put that onto R4. Transmit goes to receive. Just shut that off. Okay, last one, which is the receive which goes to transmit I'm putting these on the UART 4 T4 so R4 and T4 so we'll set up beta flight to reflect these ports correctly and we get to the programming right let's snip these wires get it plugged into beta flight and see if we can get it configured So here we are, we have landed in beta flight once again. Uh, let's have a fiddle. We've got the Matex Sys board wired into the flight controller using transmit for and receive for on the flight controller. Um, so Matex transmit goes to flight controller receive and Matex receive goes to flight controller transmit. These are on T4 and R4 as I've said. That relates to UART4 on this board. You might find some flight controllers it will relate to the number below it, so UART3, but for this one it's definitely UART4. Now, in beta flight we have UART6 currently selected. This is what the Cadex Vista is using for the DJI remote controller uh, to port into the flight controller. We don't want that, so we're gonna turn that off and select UART4. Let's save and reboot that. And once that's done, again, this is a completely blank firmware flash. This is 4.4.0 release candidate 5. I've not done anything in here, no PID tuning, no, no nothing. So this is just straight out the box. But for now, let's go into receiver, check we've got serial via UART and crossfire selected. We'll enable the telemetry, save and reboot. And that pretty much should be everything we need to do in here. We're going to disconnect to free up the COM port and then open up the Express LRS configurator. Um, I have run through this before, so I know it's working. That's why it's all so smooth, right? Because um, nobody ever does that. Yeah, well, I do. Um, so under official releases on the configurator, we're going to flash using 312. The target's going to the Matek 2.4. This is a 2400RX R24D. 
diversity antennas. Beta flight pass through is the method we're going to use. That uses the um, serial uh, ports to flash the data onto the Express LRS board um, using a native COM port. So it actually barges its way through and uses that native COM port pass through. Otherwise, you can flash through UART itself uh, or Wi Fi. UART uses the serial connector uh, as, as a bridge with the COM port connecting into the flight controller. But for now, we're just going to use beta flight pass through because it works. Under your options, set your domains, your options, your network, your binding phrase and everything else. Smash all of that in there. Select your COM port. In this case, we can see COM9 and we will build and flash. So it's going to go ahead and grab all of the data that it needs to from any repositories online and then download any dependencies. That can take some time uh, if you've not flashed this before. Uh, so it's going to go ahead and do that. Once that's done, it's going to open the COM port as it's doing now and it's now pushing the firmware and all of the config down to that board. I'm going to turn my radio on in the background. There we are, that's coming online. So we should be able to hear, once she's shut up, we should be able to hear her say uh, connected when we have a connection. Right, that's good, that's done. So. Let's go back uh, into here. I'm going to disconnect the USB, reconnect the USB. Telemetry lost. I've got telemetry lost coming from the transmitter, so that's a good sign. If we have a look at the receiver in here, and give something a wiggle, fingers crossed. There we are. We have it all in there working. There's our throttle. There's our yaw. Um, arm and disarm. Got turtle mode, flight modes. Brilliant. Okay, so next up for me, I'm going to put all this back together, put a basic tune on it, um, and get the motor orientation sorted out, connect my goggles, and um, yeah, the next step would be to take it for its maiden, maiden voyage, see how well that goes. Uh, it's not particularly windy today, but I'll probably crash it anyway. Right, on with the next bit. So the next thing to do would be to wire in the GPS. Now I've done that on TX and RX3, on UART3. So I've set UART3 in here uh, under GPS and set the input to the board rate to be 57,600. So that's in there and configured. Under the configuration, I've enabled GPS under the UBlox protocol, auto board, auto config, and I'm in the UK, and even though the UK are not using Galileo anymore, I've enabled that. There's the odd one or two that come in there, so the more the merrier, really. I've got set home point once off. What that will do is if you plug your battery in, the first point it gets a lock is where it sets your home point. If you have this selected, no matter where you arm and disarm the quad, the home point always remains the same when you first put the battery pack in. If you have that disabled, then whenever you arm with more than six satellites, which is what I have it set to, and you have a GPS lock, that's where your updated home position is going to be. So what I like to do is I don't get great uh, satellite um, signal from, from the back of my house, so I fly into the, the back garden, uh, land it there, wait till I get sat lock, and then take off from there using that as my, my home point. Um, auto detect for the ground assistance type, have that set as auto detect. It's usually set as none. Um, if it's set as none, bad things happen. So once you've done that, save and reboot. Uh, under my GPS, I'm indoors at the moment, so I've only got a couple of satellites, but uh, we can see that it's working there and um, no current location because the lack of satellites, but that's all fine. Um, on screen display is set up with my altitude, battery milliamp hour drawn, battery voltage, fly mode, GPS latitude and longitude, um, also some GPS stats, speed, direction, distance, link quality, all the usual kind of stuff. So that's my overlay. To get my overlay working, I had to put in here the VTX with the MSP Plus display port configuration and um, nothing else, no command line stuff in 4.4 release candidate 5 which is great so you don't have to muck around with settings to get the HD um, interface to start working and the OSD to start working. It even selects HD automatically. I've changed it to auto but uh, it originally detected this as HD so that's a nice little touch as well. So that's everything up and running. Um, let's cut to 
a little shot of the actual drone and how it looks now because I've added a few bits and pieces on there and my 3D printer has been busy printing away. But it's also been busy breaking. I've uh, broken the heat break on the extruder so I've got to find my V6, dig that out somewhere. I've got an E3D V6, pop that back on and uh, see if I can get TPU running through that with a without a direct extruder so that's going to be fun anyway back to the quad let's take a look and see what's happened and this is how it looks now so it's changed a bit of course what we have set up on there at the minute is some new props so i've popped on some 3042s um are they 3042s they're not they're 3052s um, these are configured to the outside in, so if we're facing this way, the front right goes counterclockwise, front left goes clockwise, and this is how I've got them configured. Uh, rear right goes clockwise, rear left goes counterclockwise. Uh, I've also changed the XT30 on the back for an XT60, because all of my packs that I'm using for this, like this uh, GN3 1300 milliamp power, um, 4S pack uh, have XT60s on them. I have no interest in changing all of the battery pack plugs, so I figured it'd be easier just to change the one on the drone. On the back, I've printed out a, uh, a TPU mount here, which mounts the DJI, uh, sorry, the Cadix Vista antenna, and two of the Diversity antennas on the back. It looks pretty smart. Uh, they're at 90 degrees from each other the diversity aerials, and they don't seem to interfere with the caddix, which is nice. On the front, there is the BN220, so that is mounted on there, just held in place with a couple of shim washers uh, in the indent above the camera, so it seems happy enough there for now. There is a lump out of that one, damaged in transit, but you know what, it still works, it's just a, a lump of ceramic. So that's all behaving itself. Now, the wiring for that is in here. This wiring that we see just here, I don't know if we can get that in focus, let's try. This wiring here is for the um, ELRS module, and the wiring here, if you can just see further up, is for the GPS. The last little thing that I've popped on there is a set of 3D printed feet, which look quite smart on there as well. They take away those foam ones that come with it, give it something half decent to to bounce along the ground on. Right, let's see if it will power up. Let's see if we get all of the flashing lights. So I do like running these high voltage LiPos. If the ESCs can take it, and this will take up to 6S, so the voltage range isn't an issue, but it just means you get a whole bunch of extra power in, in a really compact format. Okay, it's looking good. Let me get the radio. Recovered. Have the radio. I don't recommend you um you do this, but I'm going to because I'm an idiot. Okay, let's make sure this Acro is in. Mode. Acro mode. Turtle mode off. Turtle mode off. Turtle mode Hold off. it down and just power it up. Uh, Make sure things don't get caught. Gyros are working. Excellent. Well, I'd call that a success. Uh, now it's really just about how it flies. I've set some uh, some rates up on there initially. Um, I will see how I get on with them. Just using my standard rates for now which are uh, pretty close to, uh, see, I used to run Joshua Bardwell's rates and um, they were great for getting used to the, the drones with and, and kind of learning how everything works. I've since switched over to a mixture of Johnny FPV and Mr. Steele's rates. He's got two sets of rates as far as I can see, um, one slightly more mellow than the other, but I'm really enjoying them, uh, really, really enjoying them. They're, they're, even though they're incredibly fast rates, they're extremely controllable. The only thing I'm doing outside of the rates is 
lowering the midpoint on the throttle uh, to the hover point on the throttle uh, through beta flight. On this it's actually only 19%. It will hover there quite happily like that on 19%. So I'm setting the uh, the throttle mid to 19 and then setting an expo of about 45 or 50 I believe on this and it just gives me loads of fine tuning and loads of fine control around the hover point which seems to work really well. Um, and the rest you still get enough power when you need it and uh, I've actually had to lower the X bar. I think I started out with 55. It was just a bit too sluggish on the throttle. So I think it's down to, to 50 or 45.50.45 0 0.45 now. Uh, anyway, I'm waffling again, aren't I? So I'm really chuffed with this. Um, it's all working. It's all linked up. I did have to flash the newer version of the Cadex Vista firmware to get it to connect to my goggles too. Uh, and that's all working fine as well, but the rest of it, it's all golden. So um, next up is to take it out for a flight, but I think I'll save that for tomorrow. I'll probably push this video up tonight, uh, give me something to do, and then um, the next one we'll have, we'll, we'll take this out for a little rip and see how it does. So uh, yeah, I, I guess on this occasion, you know, will it mod? Absolutely. I think we've already modded the bits out of this one. Um, and short of going 6S and putting some other bits and bobs on there, you know, is there much more I can do for this? Yeah, there probably is. Is there much more I want to do? I don't think so. Honestly, uh, the reason behind this is to uh, to have a garden basher, have something that will absolutely whoop around the garden without the ferocity of the F5 scaring the cats and the dog and the kids. So uh, in this case, will it mod? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks ever so much. If you've enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe. Uh, it's always good to get comments back from you guys, so please, any feedback would be really welcomed. Uh, and let me know what you want to see next. If there's a particular subject or anything you want me to cover off, I'll, I'll do my best. I'm no genius. I'm just push, pushing the content out there. Anyway, all the best. Catch you guys soon. Ta-da!